So it's that time of year when people are buying Chinese diesel heaters for the vans. I'm no exception, I have bought one. And what's inside the box? Fuel tank, heater hose, exhaust hose, a inlet hose, the controls, fuel pump and fuel lining, mounting base, and part of the exhaust there, heater vent, air filter for the inlet hose, the rest is pretty much wiring. And a few Jubilee clips. Very helpful guide how to install it. Get rid of it. Also the box is a five kilowatt heater. Well, I'm gonna fit it underneath my front passenger seat. As you can see, there's a big space there, not being used up. I know it's upside down, but once it's bolted into position, there is plenty of space for it to go. First, I'm just gonna unbolt this seat remove it from the van. So now I've moved the seat, it has given me plenty of space to work in. Right, so I've checked underneath, I have one issue. I do have a structural support underneath the bodywork of the van, which I don't really want to pick up into. It does have two holes in it, so I'm hoping the exhaust and the inlet hoses can fit through that. Right, should just peel up. There you go. And that plate should just sit in there basically snugly. So I've drilled out the first hole, and as I mentioned before, there is a chassis framework underneath for the bodywork, and that's the edge of it, so I can't really go any bigger than that hole. So I'll do the next hole and we'll go on from there. So I've drilled out the holes for the exhaust pipe and the air inlet pipe. Now the problem was these pipes didn't fit on the chassis rail on the underneath where I already had the pre-drilled holes already made. So I've had to drill some more holes in the bottom chassis section. So what I plan to do, I might have made some coned metal structural supports. I'll just slide them in there and on each end I'll seal weld it around on the top end and the bottom end of that framework. So we're these cones into position now so I should have some extra strength there now. Next stage I'll just give it a bit of a, a blast over with some primer. I'll do the same on the underside and stone chip it off. Leave it to dry for the day and get on to the next part tomorrow. So I know what you're thinking, why have I gone to all this effort in trying to fit the diesel heater here? Well, it's more of a case I'd rather be safe than sorry. And not only that, it is in a prescribed area. Now what I mean by prescribed area, I do have the seat mounting bolts holes, and on the underside of the van, right about here, there is a mounting point for the bodywork to the chassis ladder. Now they are all within 30 centimetres of these two holes. So that's why I've sleeved it off, seam welded on the top and the underside to give it back that strength that I've taken out. So whilst the paintwork is drying off from the welding, I may as well just fit this tank. And inside the tank it should be the fittings, the mounting points, and there we are. Inside that bag is the pickup adapter for your fuel hose, your fuel hose will go on there via rubber a rubber hose, so the rubber hose will slide on there and that will slide into the rubber hose. Uh, now I am going to fit this tank in the cab. Yes, shock horror, I'm going to get a few complaints about that. It's my cab and if I want it to smell like diesel, that's my problem. It only smells like diesel if I spill it by the way. So, first thing first, I'm going to try and fit this onto the bottom of here. Great. So I'll just get my oil cutter and drill the suitable size hole for that fuel adapter. Big enough. Just. Now obviously I've got to try and thread that through there so it comes out of the hole there. Then we'll need some welding wire. I have threaded some MIG wire all the way through this tank. So that's the bottom of the tank. There's a filler point. 
of that. Uh, big wire going all the way through. What do? Just bend this over a bit and just pull this wire through. So it comes to the bottom, and hopefully, there you go. Just pull through. So that's been pulled through. That's pretty tight. So I've got an O ring on the other side of this plastic tank. Now I'm going to put the O ring on this side so it's going to be sandwiched with O rings. Of course, I'm trying to lose that fuel adapter back inside the tank. Let's get on a few threads. There you go. And now I can place this nut onto this fuel adapter. Screw it into position. Now this is a 12 milli headed nut. I'll start to screw that back up. Really, I just want to be sandwiching the moorings. Tie it off. It. Yep. Do me. So that's screwed into position now. I've mounted it onto the wall. I'm not entirely happy with it to watch you. The screws are not really deep enough, not wide enough, and this is only six mil plywood at the end of the day. I don't feel comfortable with it, so what I'm gonna do is gonna unmount it, make a framework up at the back screw that framework onto the wall and then screw this back onto that framework. So now fit in my fuel line. So from the tank it goes to a fuel filter. It's more of a gauze. That filter there can be taken apart then you can remove a metal gauze inside and wash it out. So from the filter it goes straight underneath the handbrake. Underneath the handbrake goes underneath this carpet here. I have protected it with this rubber hose. So we'll follow it underneath that part of the carpet, straight into a hole, which underneath also this box section, I have covered it in rubber protective sheathing to stop it chafing against anything, especially when it goes through this ladder chassis. So it goes through the ladder chassis and then fixes to the bottom of the solenoid pump. I've also fitted my power cable that will be fitted onto the heater. And that also goes underneath the carpet here. I've had to remove the plastic side step here because the wire follows through along this edge here. Just drops behind this, this rubber cover. Then it goes through this box section here. I have protected it with some, well, some of this water pipe. I've put it aside and I it inside this water pipe. So on the other side, it comes through now I've had to chop off the cable ends because they are too short. The wiring loom is only about nine foot long, so mine does need to be a bit longer, especially where I want to place my controls. Just here, and this is why I need to extend them cables. Now I do have a remote fob for this, so I can turn the heating on and off whilst I'm in bed. So I'll reattach all of them in a short while. Right, so I'm out of position now, I can fit this diesel heater managed to get my air inlet hose in and fuel line which we both fixed into this position here I've also got to put my exhaust pipe in which fits in that hole there I do have to get underneath and just try and avoid hitting the pump because it is quite close to the pump there so I'll have to try and manipulate where it's, where it's going to be positioned uh, that obviously fits onto the exhaust manifold there I've also inserted my rib nuts and due to it well it's not a straight floor so due to it having peaks and troughs I've just placed some foam on the lowest points and some foam back in on this plate so it's sitting nice and tight and level to the floor. I've just smeared a bit of exhaust paste around the exhaust manifold side and what I'll do I've managed to climb up all the hoses 
Yeah, it is a bit of a fiddly job. But at least now I can just work this down into them holes and clamp it into position. Right, so I've managed to get this bob started. What I'll do, I'll tighten each one up gingerly down opposite each other. So it just pushes this eater down straight to the floor. That's it all bolted into position. Them seals seems to be doing the job. I've also plugged it in. There's only one cable that goes to this heater. It's like a multi plug. I've still yet to attach the negative to the framework of the seat mounting bolt. I'll do that last one so I get my seat back in. And next job is to get the hose in. So I found the right hole cutter. And what I want to do, I just want to offset it so it's in this corner. So it gives me a scope to adjust the heat vent to either inside or out. So I've drilled a pilot hole from the other side so I know it's going to be in the right position. Now. If I didn't have a flat battery, great. <sighs> Start again. So it's just a case of pushing this in. Now the depth of that's about 50 mil. I know it's going to be pretty tight on the other side to get the hose on. So once it's in position, I can screw that onto the wall. And there is three places to put screws into. So I'll do that. I'm going to put the cover back on. So I'm now fitting my air ducting onto the heater. I've just got to fit it on the outlet end. That's it. And just a case of Jubilee, Jubilee clipping the hose into position. So now I can fit the air vent end back on. There you go. All nice and adjustable. Right, so I'm going to have to find a position for this exhaust. Now I can't really mount it anywhere near this door because obviously there's going to be a yawn in here. So the only place I can think of is here. And that's the furthest position I can get away from that door. So there you go, I've got my exhaust in. It just attaches to the front there so it's well away from the yawning. It's easy attached to a bracket on the bodywork. Just there, and another one, I've got a P-clip, fixing it onto the side of the van as well, so it's all nice and secure. Now for the air intake, that goes over the ladder chassis, and you can just see the end of it there, with like a ghost filter on it. There's the main feed pipe, and that goes all the way to the diesel eater. Now I did get these pipes the wrong way around at first, but the main feed is the plug end of the solenoid. Right, that's the seat fitted back in, and the framework for the seat does sit around the diesel heater quite snugly. I've got it all wired up on this side. Obviously on this side, I'm gonna to have to extend my wires so it'll reach from here to further on in the van. So my cables will reach to the back, I've actually extended them, so it comes through the chassis there, runs along here, this will be all covered. Nips back inside the chassis again and goes up behind there. Like I say this would be all hidden by plastic panels anyway, so you're not going to see that. And on the other side, it's probably a bit dark in here, but it does actually come from the back of the kitchen cabinet. And I will run it up against this wall here and P clip it off. Then it goes through that hole there, and then out through the back of this panel here. Now, I've drawn the wire through this panel, and that's where I'm going to mount the control panel. So I've now filled up the fuel tank with diesel. All I need to do now is fit the fuse and press the on button. The power lead from the diesel heater did come with this inline fuse. I've got rid of that, and I've actually hardwired it into here, this fuse box. So all my fuses on the 12 volt system are in the same spot. So if I pop that in, 
that should have powered that control panel. Which it has. Uh, what do I do now then? Do I just turn it on? That's it, it's doing somewhat. So now I've switched that control panel on, I can actually hear the fan on the diesel heater actually moving. So probably after about three or four minutes after me pressing that on button, it's fully kicked in now, that fuel has now primed into the diesel heater and it is blowing hot air. So it appears I did not do much more filming on the diesel heater. But again, what more can I say about it? Fuel consumption wise, I did leave the heater on this weekend for around about 20 hours, set at 21 degrees, did have the door open a few times as well, and it used one third of a tank, which is around about three litres, it's a 10 litre tank. So even at 21 degrees, that's still too hot for my van, so I've turned it back down to 15 degrees, and that gives nice heat throughout the van. Until next time, I wish you all a great Christmas and a happy new year. Thanks for watching.